Okay, hi there, it's Jeff here in the next in our series of key diagram videos. Looking forward to the exams. Let's spend a few minutes together uh, looking at positive consumption externalities. A quick reminder, as always, that externalities are spillover effects from production and or consumption for which no appropriate compensation is paid to one or more third parties affected. So we're going to focus for the next few minutes together on positive consumption externalities. And they occur when one person's consumption of a good or service generates or leads to external benefits to one or more third parties. As a consequence, this leads to marginal social benefit being greater than marginal private benefit. The idea of a positive externality means there's a, an activity generating a, a really positive third party effect. Examples. Well, the obvious ones, uh, well, perhaps not necessarily obvious, but things like education are crucial in terms of public libraries, community spaces, parks, good to access to uh, early years education. Healthcare, of course, dominated uh, the news in recent years, the vaccination programmes, people um, selflessly wearing face masks and keeping sticking to the rules on social distancing during a public health crisis generates external benefits because you reduce the risk of transmitting disease to other people. Uh, other people argue that uh, subsidised cycle schemes or, or subsidised mass transport helps to uh, generate external benefits, keeps people healthier, as well as reducing road congestion. The external, uh, external benefits of museums and galleries with open access to the general public. And also, critically, also the quality of things like free school meals, uh, early years childcare, etc., improved nutritional advice. They have a wider social benefit. Yes, there's a benefit to the people concerned. But I think the, the crucial point is that there is a wider social benefit, an external benefit to consider. It might be hard to measure it, to calibrate it, but we kind of know it's there. And that's why it's important. So here's the, this is about diagrams, this video series. Let's work through the diagram together. Here's our diagram showing the price, the social cost and benefit. Um, uh, and uh, crucially, we're going to assume no externalities in production. So we just have a normal supply curve, marginal private cost equals marginal social cost. There's the marginal private benefit downward sloping uh, of the, the benefit to the individual of consuming extra units. But with a positive externality, here we go, the marginal social benefit, can you see that, lies above the private benefit. I draw it as a diverging line because my argument is the greater the output, perhaps the even more significant could be the external benefit. For example, during the pandemic, if when when we people followed the rules and many, many people, high percentage, wore their masks in supermarkets and things and got vaccinated, of course, the impact of herd immunity uh, had was stronger as a, as a consequence. At Q1, Q1 is the, the equilibrium for the market where you only think about your own private cost and benefits. At Q1, there's an external benefit shown by the distance A to B. And what that means is that at Q1 uh, and at price P2, uh, the social benefit is at A, the private, so the social cost is at B. So at Q1, social benefit is greater than social cost. And therefore, if we underconsume anything beyond Q1, uh, the benefit is still bigger than the cost from a social point of view up to the next intercept. So therefore, society probably wants to be closer towards this point where we, uh, bring, in, we bring social cost and benefit in, into balance at a higher output level, Q2. Now, I've labelled that point C. So in the absence of intervention by government, the free market, with agents only thinking about their own private self-interest, uh, they may tend to under-consume and therefore, society might underproduce these things. And that is a market failure. There's a misallocation of scarce resources. It's allocatively inefficient from a social point of view. Indeed, the deadweight welfare loss of social welfare, if there is underconsumption, is the area A, B, C. There we go. There's your key diagram. You might want to take a screenshot for your revision notes. So the free market equilibrium is assumed only to consider... Uh, private costs and benefits with agents assumed to be operating in their own self-interest. Of course, you can challenge that assumption as part of your evaluation. The social benefits include the positive externalities in consumption. And if the market mechanism ignores positive externalities, 
then there will be underconsumption leading to what I said before, that misallocation of scarce resources and a loss of social welfare. And I think that positive externalities are very strongly linked to the moment to healthcare, including the effective vaccines that became hugely important as we try to um, bring ourselves out of the, the pandemic and the new variants and things that, that appeared along the way. So positive consumption externalities, incredibly important diagram to add to your diagram, revision notes ahead of your papers. Every best wish for them, of course. Stay happy, stay positive, and hopefully see you sometime soon.